go. First thing I would do, I would expand that numerator. I'd rewrite that. Foiling out that numerator, we have uh, first, that's uh, 8x cubed. Is that focused? Yes. Outer, we have a uh, plus 4x squared. Inner, plus 36x. And last, a plus 18. And the denominator is still just that 7x minus 4. <coughs> If we're going to uh, use the quotient rule, we need to know the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So, let's do the derivative of the denominator first. That's easier. What's the derivative of the denominator? Just 7. Now, the derivative of the numerator, that's messier. What's that? Okay, the derivative of 8x cubed, that's a 24x squared. I agree plus 8x, I agree, plus 36, and now we can use the quotient rule. It's the derivative, oh, it's the derivative of the first, which is, I'm not going to put this one, uh, online just because of my groaning there. What did I just see? I just saw that trinomial times the binomial and so I'm not going to, when I'm groaning and complaining like that, I'm not going to put this online. So as a matter of fact, as soon as I'm through with it, I'm going to hit the erase button. So it's the derivative of the first times the original denominator. So 7x minus 4 minus the derivative of the denominator, 7 times all of that original numerator, 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 36x plus 18, all over the denominator squared, 7x minus 4 quantity squared. The derivative of the first times the original second minus the derivative of the second function times the original first, all divided by the original denominator squared. Remember, I used to, we used to have a colleague that would make his students sing this song, okay? And he thought that my little crisscross method that I use is not really a crisscross method. It just so happened that here, the way it goes, this the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the original top. He'd refer to mine as a crisscross method, but he had a singing method, believe it or not. Anyway, so the denominator still that 7x minus 4 quantity squared. Y'all see why I was groaning a moment ago? We have to take every term here, distribute it over 7x minus 4. So we're going to have to take the 24x squared, distribute it over the 7x minus 4. That's going to give us a, a 168x cubed, 168, 168x cubed, and a, is that a minus 96x squared? Take the 8x, positive 8x, distribute it over the 7x minus 4. That's going to give me a, so we have a positive 56x squared and minus 32x, I agree. Okay, so you're taking the 36 times the 7x minus 4. So uh, 36 times 7x is, is uh, 252. a 252x and a 144. Is it 144? 
<sighs> and now what do I have to do? I have to distribute the 7 over all of that stuff. Okay, so distribute that minus 7 over the 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 36x plus 18. I get. I'll get it started. That's a negative 56x cubed. Okay, so a minus 28x squared. I agree. Minus a 252x, okay, I agree. A minus 126. Very rarely will you ever want to expand that denominator when you're using the uh, uh, quotient rule. We'll just leave that 7x minus 4 quantity squared as it is. And continuing on. I'm going to move that up some. So there's my fraction bar. Let's see, which term should go first? I delete the 252x and the minus 252x. Yep, you're right. We can delete that. But I'm going to put the x cubed uh, terms first. 168x cubed minus 56x cubed gives me a... A minus 112 x cubed. So we've taken care of the x cubes. Now the x squares. Negative 96 plus 56. That's a negative 4. No. Negative 96 x squared plus a 56 x squared. That's a negative 40 x squared. Any other x squares? No, okay, so a negative. Is that a negative 68 x squared? Yeah, Wait, why is no, oh, let's see. What is it? Hmm? Is it one, one, two, it's not negative. One, oh, it's not negative. You're right. Okay. And that's gone. We have only one x term, uh, that negative 32x. And our constant terms, that's a negative 2, uh, 270. A minus 270 all over 7x minus 4 quantity squared. Any questions? If we were able to factor the numerator in a way so that we could pick up a 7x minus 4, then great. We could factor that and cancel out a 7x minus 4, but I don't see a way that we could uh, factor it. First of all, this thing isn't factorable by traditional factoring method. Uh, uh, by traditional factoring methods, we'd have to resort to the fundamental theorem of algebra, the rational zeros theorem, and synthetic division to try to get it factored. And uh, and I'm pretty confident we wouldn't pick up a seven x minus four in the process. So we're going to stop right here. And I bet you. That's as far as we can go.